Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. I recently made a purchase from Swiss Tropicals and ordered their corner matting filters. I did a couple installations already to make sure I knew what I was doing, but I figured I'd share this one to help anyone out that has any confusion with it. Now before we move forward though, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, everyone else, go ahead and hit that like and that notification bell for me. So first, let's talk about what you should expect to receive when you order your uh, quarter mat and filter from Swiss Tropicals. Uh, first, of course, is going to be your foam itself. It's Porette foam. It's supposed to be a little be better than your filter, regular filter foam. Um, I've never actually tested it, so you're just going to have to take the, uh, Swiss Tropicals word for it uh, until I actually have some more experience with it. But other people that I've heard of from, they are very happy with it. Next, you have a jet lifter or an uplift tube, and basically you have a spot where you're going to connect your airline and that's what's going to bring the bubbles up which will actually lift the water from behind the sponge into your tank area. Then last you also receive two glass brackets and this is going to be what you silicone onto your tank in order to hold your matting filter in place. So I'm going to get right to it. In this case I have a 20 gallon long I got some GE1 silicone. You're going to want to look for some GE1 silicone one because that is 100% silicone and it does not have any additives that will prevent mildew and other items such as that because essentially those additives are, can be uh, harmful for your fish. So we try to avoid that. Yeah, I bought this from Home Depot. Uh, he does sell it on his site on SwissTropicals.com so you can also order it that way. Um, but yeah, it should be readily available at any of your local hardware stores. So the first step you're going to want to do is find yourself a marker and a tape measure or a ruler. Um, and basically he said that you could use a permanent marker. I happen to have a, uh, what is it called, a dry erase marker and it works fine. Uh, for my filter, I ordered the small so it's going to be, I believe, from 5 to 8 inches. Um, I went with 5 inches from the corner. You're going to want to look at your specification for your size filter that you order and uh, definitely apply that. And you can find that information on SwissTropicals.com as well. Um, so simply just go from your corner of your tank, measure out five inches. I got two little marks. I know it's probably hard to see, but essentially I'm going to use this as my straight edge. And I'm placing on both of those marks. And we're going to go ahead and put our line there. And now we have a line in the tank that can be used as a guide for where I'm going to place my silicone. Uh, first I tried just placing the silicone on these uh, brackets themselves. It didn't work out that well, so it did work out a lot better for me when I just placed it on here and held this, the brackets on there. Now basically all I'm going to do is run a bead along that line. Once you have your bead of silicone on there, you're simply just going to place your bracket on top of it. My head in the way. Apply slight pressure for about 20 seconds or so, then we will let it cure for approximately six hours. Once the first bracket has dried, we can flip the tank and repeat the process for the second bracket. Now installation does take a bit of patience, but these filters will rarely need to be serviced once installed, and they have a nice appearance, which is what I was looking for in an air-driven filter. The last step for the brackets will be to add silicone to the seams. If you're worried that these won't come out cleanly for you, you could add painter's tape at about a quarter inch from the seam prior to silicone. After 24 hours, we are ready to place the foam in and we will simply curve it slightly and slide it in.
Once your foam is in place, it's time to cut a groove for your jet lifter. I just used a knife and held the foam in place while cutting. So once your filter is installed, you'll be left with a compartment in the back. In this compartment in the back, you can put your heaters or maybe additional media, whatever you want to put back there, it'll be well hidden. In. Uh, this is what it looks like from the side, so if you're going to see the side, it might be a little unsightly, but in my case, I got a rack that will cover that up. Now this is the jet lifter. It is white initially, and I don't like that. It's the ice order for me, so I went ahead and spray painted it black. It's very simple to do. You're basically just going to give it a little sand down to make it rough so the paint sticks to it better. And you're going to use just simple um, Krylon Fusion for plastic. It's uh, great and it's aquarium safe. 